Welcome to Abby's Den. Now, what's happening is thread is getting trapped in this overlocker. So I'm chaining um, quite happily going along and threaded the machine properly. It's clean, it's oiled, everything about it's perfect. And yet I go to chain on fabric, I get to the point where I put fabric in and the machine is actually dragging. Let me get close up for you. The machine is dragging that fabric through. It's not pulling it through. It's not feeding it through. The chain's getting caught and it gets caught around the needles and you don't know what it is you're, you're doing wrong. So I've shown you on a previous video how to fix that problem on the brother and I've shown you some tips of things you need to look out for. So I'm going to show you what you need to look for. So I've got the needle plate here for the singer. Now on the brother, it's slightly different. And then you've got the chaining fork, which is that rolled hem finger, which is what I call it. So you've got the chaining finger, which slides back and forward, or it's removable. And it just gives you that option to create a rolled hem when you're not using All it. All right, let's bring that needle plate in. Now here is the needle plate for a singer overlocker. Okay, so your chaining needles are these two needles here. Now you need them to be intact. You don't want them to be damaged. You don't want them bent and you don't want them broken. So if they're broken, you need to get this needle plate replaced. Now you'll see that the chaining needles are a different height and that's okay. That isn't a problem. The engineering aspect of this is actually very good because on an overlocker, what you want to be doing is when you take your fabric, when you surge, you want to be pulling your fabric exactly behind the needle plane. I often see people dragging their fabric off the needle plate like that at an angle but you don't want to do that you want to have it coming up like that so what they've done and I think this is quite clever of them actually is they've given you a shorter needle on the left hand side so that if you do pull your fabric over to the left slightly over to the left you can swipe the fabric off now what happens is I'm going to show you the side view now now on this side view, you can see that this part of the needle plate is like a slide, isn't it? It's a slope. So the chaining needles go along there and they finish before they get to the other end of this needle plate. And the reason is, is so that the threads can come off these needles and then they slide easily off the needle plate nice and smoothly. So um, if I put the fabric there, you can see that they can slide off. So we're not talking about fabric comes off there because the fabric will be sat on top, won't it? But if these were threads, then the threads would be able to slide off nice and easily. So you want that slope. So look at your needles. Are those needles nice and straight? Make sure they're not broken. On your singer, there's one that's shorter than the other and that's a great idea for singer to be doing that on their machines. And it would be great if Brother and Jaguar and Janome do that as well, implement that idea because it's quite a simple idea to help avoid costly mistakes. So if you drag your fabric off to the side, what you might do if you don't have a singer and it's another machine with needles exactly the same length, is you might yank those needles up or across and bend them, which will cause damage and eventually that will break. So they will break. So be careful. Make sure when you take your fabric off the needle plate, even with the singer, just because you've got the needles short, one shorter than the other, get in the habit of only pulling your fabric behind like that. Okay. So now we know what we're looking for on the needle. So here's the chaining fork. What happens with this chaining fork is this actually sits on the machine like this. Let me show you on the machine. So it sits on the machine like that, but inside, okay? And it sits level next to the chaining needles there. And it slides like this, okay? It's this chaining finger here will sit by the needles with the tip of this um, being level with the tip of the needle on the right, okay? Like that. And then they will also be sat 
level however way it sits so so it sits like that <laughs> let's have a look at the side so if that finger is not level so if that chaining finger is not level with those needles what happens is sometimes um that that's bent okay so that nose let's call it a nose is bent downwards and if that's bent downwards it's sitting on that slope so your threads can't come off. They're going, they're getting stuck over there. And then you're yanking at it and you're pulling and then what you end up doing is you probably break those needles. <laughs> it's quite expensive fix then. You've just got to go and order a new needle plate. Okay, so in machines like this, you cannot release that chaining finger easily. And uh, these are both very similar. So I'm gonna show you on this machine. So I'm just going to show you how to release it you already know how to make the adjustment. So we're just going to remove the knife, out, move the knife out of the way. Always make sure the knife is out of the way. Always make sure your machine is unplugged, switched off, um, so you don't have any accidents. There's only a couple of machines that disengage the chaining mechanism when the door's open. These do not. So do make sure that you uh, unplug your machine. Let's grab a screwdriver so we can take the needle plate off. Now this is a single machine from Lidl, it's the SO10L, but it's very similar to, uh, to many of the single machines. Let's release that foot and we can release the uh, needle plate. To release that so the way to release our uh, chaining finger is actually move this mechanism off here and the way to do that on this particular machine is with this screw there that's too big so I need a smaller screwdriver Be very carefully you can take the stitch finger out, the chaining finger out. This is working perfectly and I'm happy with this. So there's no need for me to make any adjustments to this. But if yours is damaged, you can just grab yourself a pair of pliers and make that adjustment. Now, it's very, very easy to fix. So you've got your the nose part of the chaining finger straight across it needs to go nice and straight across and if it's facing down which is why you've got the problem then you just need to grab something and no uh, pliers like this this cost me i think these cost me two pound in ikea these are nice and wide so they grab the whole of the nose for me and just bend it back up just be very very careful that you don't bend the whole of it so you need to hold it very close to the nose and bend it and just take your time doing that, okay? Um, and then just replace it and you will see a massive difference. If you like that video, make sure you do a thumbs up for me. I need to hear your voice, so you need to comment below. Let me know, subscribe, that really helps the channel. And if you really want to, you can head over to my coffee page and make a donation because every little helps. Thank you for watching and I will see you soon. Take care.